You guys have sat through quite a few presentations so far today. So to uh, try to avoid repeating myself or further complicating uh, everybody, I'd like to, uh, if anybody wants to volunteer some like feedback on what you've learned or questions that you have from other presentations, I'm gonna try to kind of tailor this to uh, what you want to get out of it rather than me just talking for 20 minutes. Anybody have anything they've learned or are wondering about from previous folks? Volunteering? <laughs> no? No? Okay. You want to learn? I'm already hung up. All right. I got it. That's fine. Oh. I got it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Brian there, you can just nod if you don't want to volunteer to talk. Brian was talking a little bit about equipment, yeah, like spay lines. You talked about Scandinavian style line, I think I heard, and a Skagit line. Told you they have a Scandinavian line, has some taper to the front, right? Correct? Yep. Nods, yeah. And uh, Skagit line's a lot more robust in the front, correct? Less taper. This is a Skagit line here. You can see how thick this is compared to a normal trout line. Did he talk then about what's going on the front of these? Yep. A little bit? Yep. So Skagit line, typically, we put a sink tip on there. Some type of heavy, massive tip. If I were to just take this, this is a trout rod, but I've got this big heavy line you could see here. And uh, say I wanted to swing a little soft tackle or something, I put a typical trout leader, a nine foot 3X leader or something like that on there. And I go and throw it out there. And what you're gonna find is that because there's no taper to the front of this line, it's gonna be very, uh, let's just say it's gonna lack delicacy. And so, you have when you what the front taper of the fly line does is it dissipates the energy so you have all the energy in the mass of this line here as it comes out that front taper dissipates the line you just like a weight forward trout line allows you to lay out that dry fly and have it come down soft so if you were to just put that trout leader on the end of a skagit line you're going to find that the uh the line, the whole Skagit line is going to go flying out there, snap taut, and the leader is just going to fizzle out, probably throw a bunch of wind knots in it and create a bunch of issues. So we really need to uh, dial in the equipment um, to what we're trying to do. So in this case here, I have this Skagit line. These Both the rods I brought over are identical. And I've got this Skagit line, and I put a big heavy sink tip on it. This one, my goal is to throw a larger fly. Okay, so I'm not gonna throw that little soft tackle wet fly. I'm gonna throw a bigger sink tip, a sculpin pattern, something like that if I'm trout fishing. Then I have a different rod here with a Scandinavian style line. And this line has a lot more front taper on it. So now instead of needing that sink tip on here, I can just add a nice 10, 12 foot mono leader. I've got the front taper of the line to dissipate the energy, help it lay out clean. So now here, I can put that soft tackle on there and see how it all lays out taut instead of shooting out there and bunching up in big wind knots. So we've made sure we've matched our leader, our fly, to the type of line. So for me, I'm not a big gear head with 50 different spay rods or anything, but for me, whether it's trout fishing like this or steelhead fishing or anything, I get a rod, it might be my first spay rod. I'm going to have two different lines for that same rod to keep things versatile. So here, here I was able to just, I actually grabbed Josh's rod that was the same as mine just so I could demonstrate without switching these out but if it was me on the river you know we were fishing yesterday up river and uh, we were throwing bigger leeches and uh, swinging those but if a hatch would have came off 
I wouldn't have just tied the little soft tackle imitating an emerger onto the same system. I would have just real quick, it take, takes five minutes to swap the whole head out here because it's looped onto this running line and I would have looped onto the, the Scandinavian style line with a little front taper and a little more delicate and then I would have been ready to fish the soft tackle. So one rod, two lines, a Skagit line, a Scandinavian line, you can do anything you need to do and feel very competent in what you're doing. Any questions on that, like the gear? On the back end of these, I'll mention you want to, if you're into anybody here coming to Trout Spay from Steelhead first? No, mostly, yeah, a couple people. So when, when I first got into these lighter rods, I had uh, the same shooting line or running line behind these shooting heads that I would use on my big steelhead rod. Well, what I found was that that thick diameter shooting line had too much drag for this little line. You know, the same line I'm using on my steelhead rod weighs double what this one does. So the drag behind here was too heavy to really cast. The shooting head wouldn't pull the running line out there and shoot it out. So everything's been tapered to what we're trying to do. So on this, I have little thin diameter monofilament. So this little line weighs 270 grains. So I've got this thin shooting line there that can go out there with minimal drag. At the same time, if I go and put this little 25 pound test monofilament on the steelhead rod, there's no drag going out there for that heavy line. And what I found, there's a couple things that actually happen. One, it just tangles real easily because the speed and the force pulling it out will just bird's nest it coming up out of your rod. The other thing that'll happen is the, uh, you actually, these lines, even though they're a shooting head, we want minimal friction on this line. You need a tiny bit to stabilize the line in flight. So if you have too light a shooting line with the heavy line, that actually affects the flight of the line and the aerodynamics of it. So we tapered everything, matched it all. And so these days it's real easy to get a good rod. Every one of these out here is a very capable rod for what you want to do. It's real easy to find a good spay line. Sometimes the overlooked part is kind of the takeaway here. You need to tape match everything in there and sometimes it takes a little experimentation to figure that out you know you having trouble casting a big fly on your line well maybe your leader's too long and you shorten it up or something or you got that little soft tackle out there on your line it's slapping down on the water and scaring the trout maybe you lengthen your leader or change the tip or the line that's on there to make it all match and get the presentation you want out of the fly okay all right, no other questions on, on anything. I'm just gonna kind of merge into some of the casting stuff. Try to uh, tell you a little story about my journey in, into spay casting for those of you that are relatively new to it. I started spay casting, uh, shit, it's been uh, 16, 17 years ago. Um, there wasn't a lot of info out there at the time and uh, so it involved a lot of my own experimentation. And uh, the first info I was able to find, you know, you were uh, videos. And you, you get all these different videos. You see everybody. You've had the opportunity to watch a lot of different people cast a spay rod today that are all very comp uh, competent at it and uh, beyond competent. But so as I watched all those folks, I, I took a little bit from all of them and everything, and quite honestly, for me, it gets kind of confusing. You know, one person says do this with your arms, the next person says do that, becomes, can become a struggle. So I got into it. I, uh, I had this 14-foot rod, and I had a, uh, what we call a mid-belly line. It was one of the original ones. And uh, the next thing, the Skagit line just came on the market. And so I bought this Skagit line. And the info, information was just starting to get out there. Rio came out with their first video on Skagit casting and stuff like that. And so I started to do that. And then I became interested in a Scandinavian style line. So I got that and I read all about that. And so they were very 
differing styles. And so I would get better at spay casting and then I would pick up this different line and this different style of casting and then I would regress and I would really struggle. So what happened was I started to look for what the unifying concepts were to the spay cast. And so I compared the different styles and I said, well, why do all of these work? They clearly all work. So what's making them work? And the conclusion that I came to was that when we have this spay cast, it evolved on the river spay. It was tight banks like this. There was overhanging trees. So the spay cast evolved to anchor the line on the water to go forward so we didn't have a back cast. Well, through all this observation of all these different casters, what I, the conclusion I came to in my own casting was that that anchor right there also happened to represent the critical point and the critical part that is what was going to separate a decent spay cast from a, one that failed. Okay, so the better I anchored the line on the water, the better it all worked. So I started to revolve everything I did about around this. And so in my own observation and practice, I figured out that the anchor does two things for me. One, it prevents the line from going into a back cast. Two, a good anchor needs to point at my target, okay? So it needs to point in the direction I'm going to make the line go. So when I observed all this, you could figure out that, okay, well, if I make an anchor that doesn't point at my target, it causes a problem. If I make an anchor that doesn't stick to the water, I'm not going to hit you in the head, John. But if I were to come around here and I lose this anchor, that creates an issue that creates a failure of the cast or a poorer result than I wanted. And the other part that can happen is I can have too much line stuck to the water. So one, I got to make the line the anchor point at the target I wish to have and two I need to find the sweet spot this is the anchor here is line stick it's tension on the water I need to find the sweet spot too much sticks gonna rob the cast of energy it's gonna slurp and go out too little stick creates the snapping noise so there's a audio component that we can use to figure this out so slurp too much stick snap too little the right amount of stick comes off the water quiet. No slurp, no stick, okay? So I've learned something. So I'm struggling out there. I hear, I'm hearing this snap over and over again. That's a blown anchor. I'm losing energy there. So I need to do something to remedy that. So in my own spay casting, I think the best thing you can do is not be afraid to experiment. If you're struggling, don't be afraid to try something different kind of self-analyze what's going on. You, Over time, you figure out these clues. Okay, I'm hearing that snap. It means I have too little line stick, so I need to figure out a way to stop that. So there's the snap. It's not going so well. Well, here. Okay, I just slowed down a little, and I kept a little bit more line on the water, and the result improved, okay? The other thing here, we got too much stick, okay? Go on the opposite direction. I got too much stick there. Well, why? When I came around here, I had this big thing, this big L line on the water that didn't work. So I'm going to change my anchor placement. So now I come around here and everything straightens out. I moved my anchor into that line. I straightened things out. I could talk for three hours on fixing those faults, but just self-observation. So that good anchor here, in order to duplicate this over and over, when I was learning the spay cast, I sat here. Now I recognize most people aren't probably going to spend hundreds of hours. We want to go fishing, right? But I, I sat here and I spent hundreds of hours practicing my anchor until I got it the way I wanted. And 
So the takeaway though is when things go wrong, we can just kind of start breaking it down into steps. So I'll touch on that real briefly. So how do we make this good anchor? We know that at the bad anchor, we've got a snap or a slurp or something like that. How do we recreate over and over that nice silent anchor that comes out nice and clean? Okay, so we're doing a snap T here. Cast, I'll show you a couple of the touch and go cast, but whether it's a snap T or a double spay here, doesn't matter. All this is gonna work the same. For this, I break it down into three steps. I have one, anchor set, two, sweep, three, forward cast, okay? So, step one to make the good anchor of the line on the water is whether, if it's a Skagit line, I'm gonna look at where the Skagit line there, where the end of the line meets the sink tip on the Scandinavian line here. I'm gonna look where the Scandinavian shooting head meets my leader. And this is how I was able, I've been able to, you know, the takeaway for me was that I could easily change back and forth between lines here and make this work. I have a point of reference on both of them. So on step one here, the snap on this cast, I need to place my anchor a rod length away, okay? And so that's what I practice for hours and hours and hours is a rod length away right there. Can you guys see that? So the, where that meets the leader, I'm putting it a rod length away on the side of my body I'm gonna cast. If this was a double spay, I'm putting it a rod length away on my downstream side here. That's the side of my body I'm gonna cast. Okay, so if that lands too far upstream there, everybody, I come around and I have too much stick. If it lands too far downstream, I come around and I have no anchor, okay? So that's how the rod length away thing came. So a foot or so variation is perfectly uh, natural. Three feet makes a fairly decent difference. Six, eight feet of variation, you know. If this is landing up there, one cast, landing down here the next, I'm never gonna be able to get consistent because everything's gonna change on each cast. So the more accurate and consistent you can get with placing that a rod length away, the easier the spay cast is gonna be. It's a really simple thing to pay attention to. Rod length away, okay? So I've, I've narrowed that down. Once, I've el once I eliminated that, I was able to rec work on the second step. Second step, I need to make this point towards my target. And we're gonna do that with the sweep of the rod. So I've made my snap, I've completed that. Now I'm gonna sweep the rod around my body. On this cast, I do that just by turning my shoulders to the, my target. You can see the line now points. If my target's a 45 there, I'm making my line point at that. If I wanted to go that way, I'm not gonna turn as much and now I've made my line point at that target, okay? There's a second component going on there, the sweep. I want the line to lay flat on the water. My anchor is that leader. If it was a Skagit line, my anchor is that sink tip. If I have half that sink tip laying on the water, that's not enough water tension or half that leader. If I have that fly line laying on the water, too much stick, right? So the sweet spot is just that leader. So it's got to point at my target and it's got to be laying flat on the water. That's a good anchor, okay? If it's a Skagit line, it's the sink tip in your short little leader and fly. If you can, in an essence here, spay casting to me, if you can make your leader or your sink tip and fly lay flat on the water and point at your target, if, you, if that's when you start going forward into your forward cast, the cast is gonna work. That's the essence of it. Make an anchor that points to your target, provides a proper amount of water tension. And re realistically, as I went into this and d did all these different casting styles, at some point, I simplified it to just that. And I realized that a lot of different styles, just like golf, I always, I like to golf, I compare this to golf. 
everybody's got a different golf swing what makes it work well the pro golfers are the ones who most consistently have the club head square to the target at impact the ball goes where they want it to what goes on coming back and going forward looks different on every person and just like that in spade casting it's going to look different but if you look at all these different casters all their different lines if you look at the point where they start the forward cast and start to go forward it's all going to be pretty similar you're going to see an anchor pointing at the target and everything hopefully will go as planned does that make sense the essence of my presentation that spay casting kind of comes down to making an anchor that points at your target you throw the anchor too far. Yes. It's not far enough. Yeah. Uh, say it's a double spay and you're sure. too far down. Pull it up. Or say snap T. Pull it in a little bit before you start the forward cast. Good question. Yes. Okay. So he's asking if you mess up your anchor, what do you do? Okay. If your anchor's 30 feet upstream in a pile, you're probably your best step is to reset yourself, roll cast it back downstream and go but you bring up an excellent point. So let's say I'm gonna do a double spay here because the wind's blowing hard downstream right this second and I don't wanna hit myself and look like a fool. <laughs> so I'm, my goal is a rod length away there. It came up a little too far, right? Okay, a little bit past a rod length away. If I pause just a second, the current's going to bring that into position, and that is absolutely an option. Okay, there it is, the little pause. Now I see it where I want it, and the cast works. Yep. What if it's short? Short, good. Short, okay, so I'm doing a double spay. My target is across. Here's my rod length away. Here's my cast. I've left it short there. Short is in line with a lesser angle change. So you could throw a lesser angle change over. So basically your forward cast in the, the D loop and everything is gonna line on that anchor point and you're able to make the cast work. If it's too short there and you're not gonna get any fishing out of it, you might just roll cast it down. Okay, start again, reset, take a breather, get it right. Mm -hmm.